Pythagorean theorem, converse, and classifying triangles. Um, now, some of y'all may recognize uh, after we do this, these first couple questions from the PMA. Uh, <coughs> this is what they were asking y'all on the PMA, the, those who took it. Uh, when they ask you to classify a triangle as obtuse, acute, or right. We hadn't taught y'all that yet, and I told you it was going to be stuff on the PMA that we hadn't taught y'all. But this is it right here. Y'all are familiar with Pythagorean theorem. Um, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm going to show you that again, and it's converse, though. Um, the converse stuff, all that's just showing you is, well, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, that's an equation. If that equation is satisfied, then you have a right triangle. So basically, if a squared plus the b squared, whatever your a and b are, and you square them and add them together, if that's equal to c squared, then you know you have a right triangle because that equation is satisfied. Um, but there are also converses to that, too. If a squared plus b squared is less than c squared, then you have a different type of triangle. And then if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, you have a different type of triangle, too. I never remember until I teach it again which one is acute or obtuse, so I ain't going to say that right away. Uh, we'll do it. All right. Well, I remember now because I'm looking at it. So up top here, we're just going to write uh, the Pythagorean theorem a couple different ways. Uh, based on the way we write it, we're showing a certain type of triangle. Let me zoom in. So it says, given a triangle with sides A, B, and C. Let me make sure I got my focus on. All right. uh, the first way it says, if, and you know this way. Actually, we're not doing it. Yeah, let's do that first. If C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. This Pythagorean theorem, I'm just writing a C in front this time. I don't want y'all to be confused. I'm just writing a C in front. This is regular Pythagorean theorem that we've always done. If that's the case, then you have a right triangle. Right, and we're going to do the triangle symbol. So, if your numbers satisfy the regular Pythagorean theorem equation, then you have a right triangle. Now, if the numbers that you're using, uh, your c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, when you do your numbers and you calculate if that's the case, then you have an acute triangle. Acute meaning what, Zach? What's less than 90 degrees? Huh? Yeah, all your angles are less than 90 degrees. Make sure you're writing this down, man. Oh. Uh, and then the last one is C squared is greater than A squared. Oh, that's supposed to be squared. I don't know why I about to put a plus sign there. A squared plus b squared, <coughs> then you have an obtuse triangle. Obtuse meaning what, just say, you know? Say it louder. Good. That one of the angles is greater than 90 degrees. It's not all of them, it's just one. For acute, all your angles have to be less than 90 degrees. But for obtuse, you just have to have one angle greater than 90 degrees, and you have an obtuse triangle. <clears throat> All right. So down here, one through four, all we're going to do is check using um, the formula. We're going to check using the formula, and then we're going to see uh, what kind of triangles we have down here. Like I so said, you see you got options. You got uh, acute, right, obtuse, and you have not a triangle. Oh, my bad. I'm just looking at I'm sorry. The answer boxes. That's your answer choices down here once we check. Oh, 
Oh yeah. And um, for the knot of triangle, um, the first thing we have to uh, we have to check before we even check to see what kind of triangle it is. You remember, for a triangle to be a triangle, the two smaller uh, sides of that triangle have to add up to be something greater than the uh, larger side. That's something we learned in another unit. That's just about a triangle being a triangle, proving that. Um, so the first thing we want to check and make sure is that our three uh, sides add up to even make a triangle. And if that's the case, then after that we can check to see what kind of triangle it is. All right, so I'm going to do a two with you. Which two do I want to do? I'm going to do one and four. All right, number one. First thing I want to do is check to see if this is a triangle. So I'm going to take my two smallest sides. Even if they're not in order, you can put them in order, but they are in order. Uh, 3 plus 7, that gives me 10. 10 is greater than my bigger side, which is 9. So this is a triangle. So I, I know I don't have to check that first box. Now I need to figure out what kind of triangle it is. To figure out what kind of triangle it is, I'm going to use um, the Pythagorean converse up here. Only thing I'm gonna leave out, I'm gonna leave out this uh, symbol in the middle because I don't know what that symbol is gonna be yet. I'm gonna just put a question mark there. So, for example, this first one, I'm gonna say c squared equals. Oh, and I just said I wasn't gonna put a symbol there. C squared, excuse me, question mark. Don't put equals. A squared plus b squared. <coughs> and then we need to check using the numbers. Remember, it don't matter about your A and your B, as long as those are your two smallest numbers. Your C is always the most important one. C is going to be your biggest number. So for C, for me, it's going to be 9. Uh, so it's 9 squared on this side. And then on the other side, it's going to be 3 squared plus 7 squared. And then 9 squared, 81. On this side, 3 squared, 9, 7 squared is 49. And then I'm adding those together. So 81, this is 58. So when I look at this, I see 81 is greater than 58. <coughs> based on that and based on the... Uh, Pythagorean theorem converse up here. Since my side C is greater than uh, C squared is greater than A squared plus B squared, this is an obtuse triangle that I would be looking at. I'll do one more with you and then I'll make you do the other two. I'm going to do number four. Number four, first thing I want to check and see if this is a triangle. <clears throat> check to see if it's a triangle. Add the two smaller sides up. 17 plus 17. That's going to give me 34. <clears throat> 34 is greater than 22. So yes, this is definitely a triangle. Then after that, I want to check see what kind of triangle it is. So I'm saying C squared, question mark, A squared plus B squared. C squared for me is going to be 22 squared. And then my A and B are both 17. Um, 22 squared is 484. And then 17 squared is 289, so that's twice. And then I want to add those together. 484 over here, 578. So in this case, 484 is less than 578. <coughs> so my C squared is less than my A squared plus B squared. So looking back up here, if C squared is less than, then I have acute triangles.
I have an acute triangle. I'm talking about triangles. Just one. <clears throat> I can say. And if they're equal, then you got to write. Uh, try number two and three. Answer both of those. You got examples right there, one and two. Check to see if it's a triangle first. If it ain't a triangle, you ain't got no work to do. Tali, what you got on number two? Uh, first, Tali, was it a triangle? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so you got 41 was greater than 29. Good. So it was a triangle. Then after that, uh... Say equal. What kind of triangle did you pick? Right triangle. Cool. All right, so that's what it's going to look like when it's a right triangle. Make sure y'all do the check first. I didn't show the check. Let me show what Tyree said. Um, Tyree said, excuse me. He <sighs> got 41 here, and he said 41 was greater than 29, so he knew it was a triangle. Then he checked it. Got a right triangle. <clears throat> uh, Emma, what you got on three? Four plus eleven, uh-huh. Fifteen. Fifteen is less than sixteen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you could stop right there, yeah. This is not a triangle. Remember, the two smaller sides, to even be a triangle, the two smaller sides have to add up to be something greater than the larger side. I say greater too, it can't be equal either, remember that. <clears throat> For the triangle to be a triangle, the two smaller sides always have to add up to be something larger than the larger side. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, so a little bit of that was new. Well, checking to see if it's acute or obtuse, that was definitely new for y'all. Uh, this part right here, five and six, is something y'all done with me before classifying the triangle. They want to classify the triangle as either equilateral, isosceles, or scaling. <clears throat> uh, something we've done before. On the back, we're going to take it a step further based off the stuff we did yesterday. But just real quick on here, let's just try to classify these real quick to remind you. Uh, A is at negative 2, negative 3. B is at 6, 1. C is at 3, 7. about this uh I'm gonna do different colors too you know me so I need to check all my sides and uh see the length of them and see if uh this is equilateral isosceles or scaling I mean like I said it's kind of obvious but I'm gonna do the work anyway it's 
definitely not equilateral. It could possibly be isosceles, but more than likely, you know that it's probably scalene. But we're going to check real quick because y'all going to, at least in y'all notes, do the proper work. Some of these problems you can get away with. Some of them you won't be able to. Though. So from A to B, I got 4 and 8. Now, since we're not partitioning right now, it don't matter if we have positive or negative numbers. <clears throat> we just find our lengths. So don't think about how we did a partition before. You don't have to do it the same way. Mm, three and four. I ain't four. I don't know. I'm tripping. I was like three and six. My bad. That's a six right there. Last one. Get ten and five. Ten and five up here. Alright, so we got all our sides. All our sides have different numbers, so uh, we would definitely want to check to see if anything was congruent. <clears throat> Remember, if you know, when you do your triangles, some of your numbers are the same, you already know stuff is congruent. Like I said, this one looks obvious, but I'm going to still check and do the work. I'm not going to make the work long, though. I'm going to do AB first. AB, 4 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. That's 16 plus 64 equals c squared. That's 80 equals c squared. So square root, square root. So square root of 80. We don't need a decimal because they're not asking us to find lengths anyway. They want to just know if uh, these are scalene, isosceles, or whatever. So we don't need to get the decimal. We can leave it like that <coughs> and just compare our squares, our squared answers. So. Well, let me just write this here. Square root of 80 equals C. We're going to leave it like that. <clears throat> um, next one, BC. 3 squared, 6 squared equals C squared. That's 9 plus 36 equals C squared. 45 equals c squared square root square root like I said we could leave that like that too because we're not going to get a perfect square from it so square root of 45 as of right now none of our sides are congruent we just need to check the last side make sure it's not congruent either uh, this is AC or CA let's write CA CA 10 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. 100 plus 25 equals c squared. This is 125 c squared. Square root, square root. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 125. So none of them are congruent. <coughs> like I said, y'all probably do that starting out, but I'm going to show you the work anyway. And since none of them are congruent, we're going to classify this as Not everybody at once. We're going to classify this triangle as. Thank you. Scaling. Number six, real quick. Another one. <clears throat> um, A is negative two, five. B is at. Negative three, no, three, negative three. Mm. Why did I put that shit there? I don't know, I got this in the wrong spot. I thought I was tripping. Y'all ain't even saying that. Y'all don't even stop me when I start doing crazy stuff. Negative two, up five. This is negative. I mean, this is 3, negative 3, okay. And then this is negative 2, negative 7, down here. Well, it ain't going to stop us because we're going to draw a line through that anyway, so that's okay. 
<coughs> so A, B, and C. That vertical line gonna go through that anyway. That'll work out. This is another one. Once you draw it out, it come, becomes quite obvious. And I don't think they all gonna be this. So you might have to check some of them. I don't know why we did two like this, but we did. <coughs> um, it's kind of obviously scalene, but I still wanna be sure about the situation. Uh, also, use common sense too. The only two sides you really gotta check are A, B, and B, C. AC is on there straight, so you can just count that and know what AC is. And AC gonna be a whole number, so these these two decimals, then they definitely not gonna be the same. Um, this is five and eight, and then yeah, this is four and five. I'm going to tell you right there, and like I said, I'll speed you up on this one, oh my goodness, <clears throat> due to the fact that we got a 5 in both of these, and then we got a 4 and then an 8, I know these two numbers ain't going to come out the same, but you see what I'm saying, because I'm using 5 one time and then a different number the other time, they definitely won't come out the same, so honestly on this one, you can stop right there once you do your triangles and you get your count, it's kind of obvious. And then um, you know this side is longer than both of them just by it being on here straight and being so long. <clears throat> this is scaling. We ain't gonna even show no work on this one. Now these ones on the back, you're not gonna be able to get away with that because you gotta classify them further than just scaling out our equilateral or uh, isosceles. Put to the best. <clears throat> Make sure you pay attention on these first two, because I'm going to do the second two on your own, because I don't want to do all these. Uh, so he's using the graph, uh, use the given coordinates to classify each triangle. Look at your answer choices, though. On the back, scalene, 45, 45, 90, equilateral, and then 30, 60, 90. So on these, <clears throat> you got to go a step further. I mean... Say you see, uh, say you classify it, and you see it's an isosceles triangle. After that, you need to check and see if it's 45, 45, 90. A 45, 45, 90 is an isosceles triangle, um, but not all isosceles triangles are 45, 45, 90. Um, to do that further check, we'll do what we know about special right triangles. We'll have the numbers already, so we'll just have to check. Like for example, for 45, 45, 90, remember the difference between the legs and the um, Hypotenuse is basically the square root of 2. You either multiplying by square root of 2 or dividing by square root of 2. We'll do that check at the end to see if it's 45, 45, 90 or not. If it's an isosceles triangle. If it's a scalene triangle, then we also want to check and see if it's a 30, 60, 90. We'll do the checks for 30, 60, 90 on our lengths once we get those for the scalene one. <clears throat> now, a scalene triangle can be a 30, 60, 90. Um, but it won't always be a 30, 60, 90. Uh, but 30, 60, 90 will always be scaling. If you understand how I said I said that in reverse. But yeah. So, I mean, it could be scaling without being 30, 60, 90. But uh, it could be scaling and 30, 60, 90. So make sure you do that. Alright. Well, we're checking. The vertices of triangle ABC are negative 3, 1, that, 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 what type of triangle is triangle ABC? Yeah, alright, we're graphing. Alright, you probably already graphed while I was talking. Negative 3, negative 1, let me try to graph this right. Negative 3, negative 3, so how do we want this to look? Yeah. Negative 3, negative 3. And then, what's the other one? One zero. Alright. 
it's a small triangle, but well, that makes our life a little bit easier when we're doing our check. A, B, C. So on this triangle, um, you see AB is on there straight, so we can just count that and have that number. Um, we need to do BC and um, AC or CA. Four and three, thank you. And then you got four and one, thank you. And then four and one right there. All right. So starting out, I know AB is two, so we can just count that. BC, oh, doing that in red. BC, that one is three squared plus four squared equals C squared. Nine, sixteen, C squared. Twenty-five, C squared square root square root we can take the square root of 25 so um oh five equals c so in that case bc equals five and the last one ace well ca And this is 4 squared plus 1 squared equals C squared. 16 plus 1 equals C squared. That's 17. Square root. Square root. Can't take the square root of that, so we're going to leave that as square root of 17 equals C. My bad. So those are my three limbs. <coughs> um, Obviously, all three lists are different. This is definitely scalene, but you also want to see uh, if this is a 30, 60, 90. If it's 30, 60, 90, then it's going to have those relationships we talked about uh, from the short leg, long leg, and then um, the hypotenuse. The easiest way to check, uh, to see if it works out, uh, check the hypotenuse versus the short leg, because you remember... The short leg is half of the hypotenuse. So if that doesn't work out, then you don't even have to check anything else. So the short leg would have on this would have been A B, which was two. That means it has to be half of B C. B C was what? Five? So that's not half. It would have B C would have had to been four for us to keep going. The fact that that's not the case, this definitely isn't a thirty six and ninety. Those who were here yesterday, y'all understand what I'm saying, right? I think I'm speaking. I'm just talking about the stuff from yesterday. The relationship between, if you need to take out your notes from yesterday, you can. The relationship between the, on the 30, 60, 90, the hypotenuse and the short leg. Remember, it's times two. The hypotenuse is double of the short leg. So, that, you can do that check first. That's the easiest one to do. And then after that, if you, that, if that does check out, you have to do the short leg versus the um, long leg, which is times square root three. But since the hypotenuse part don't work out, you can just stop right there. This ain't a 30, 60, 90. Like I said, if that was if BC was four though, we would have to definitely check that other side. Alright. So it's just scaling. Moving on. Uh you'll see what I'm saying more on this next one. Well not not as far as 30, 60, 90 though. Number eight. Mm, three, seven. Make sure I'm graphing right this time. One, three, and then four, four. I'm glad these triangles small. So A, B, and C. So on 
this one A to B starting out. What's that? Two and four. And you got AC. Which is one and three. And then BC. One and three as well. So you at least know that AC and BC are congruent. Um, we would have to still check, make sure all three sides aren't congruent, and then after that, uh, we'll go a step further. All right, so let's get all the numbers first because we're going to need all of them anyway. A, B, 2 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. 2, 4, 16, C squared. That's 20 C squared square root square root. You get square root of 20 FC. Because we can't take square root, so we'll just leave it like that. Um, BC next. Well, once I do BC, I'll know exactly what uh, CA is, so I'm only going to do one of them and just duplicate my answer. 1 squared plus 3 squared equals C squared. 1 is 1, 3 is 9. Add those together, that's 10 equals c squared. Square root, square root. Square root of 10 equals c. <coughs> so bc is square root of 10. That means that ca would also be square root of 10. I could just write that for ca. I know that's going to be the same answer. Because <coughs> my lengths were exactly the same. Uh, so at this point, I got square root of 10, um, I got square root of 10, square root of 10, and then square root of 20. Obviously two of my sides are the same. This is definitely isosceles. Unfortunately, isosceles is not an answer choice over here. You need to check to see if this is 45, 45, 90. Remember for 45, 45, 90, I think I put my notes up, but if you have your notes, I don't know if anybody has one. Uh, the front of the notes. Yeah. The difference between the two legs and the hypotenuse was square root of 2. If you had a leg and you wanted the hypotenuse, you would multiply by square root of 2. If you had a um, hypotenuse and you want to know what the leg or you would divide by square root of 2. <coughs> you can easily apply that to this. My two legs are B and C, right? They have to be. They're the two smallest sides that are congruent. All I want to do is check to see if I multiply by square root of 2 if I'm going to get what my, what you call it was. And I can show you, but it should be obvious to you. So I'm going to say square root of 10, which is one of my legs, times square root of 2. Square root of 10 times square root of 2 will give you square root of 20. Well, square root of 20 is what AB is. Since that's the case, this satisfies um, what would we need for a 45-45-90 triangle. So I'm going to say yes, this is a 45-45-90 triangle based on the leg. Uh, when I multiply it by square root 2 being this equal to the hypotenuse. So those are the checks you have to do. Scaling and what you call it. Uh, 45, I mean for 3690, 45, 45, 90. Yeah. <coughs> Try already know the other one. Try 9 and 10. See what you get. I'll get the dough. Keep going. Alright, real quick, I'm picking back up on your uh, practice page. I'll show you one thing, so I won't have to answer individually with the kids. I can't like be know what to do in certain situations. 9 and 10. 
I kind of just drawn out problems, but they're based on the stuff from yesterday. Um, and they want you to find whatever length they actually need to find. On um, number nine, it says diagram belongs to a rectangle ABCD with diagonal BD. Uh, it says, what is the perimeter of the rectangle ABCD to the nearest tenth? So, they're setting my answer as a decimal. Y'all okay over there, man? Because you already ain't finished your notes, so I don't understand why we're laughing right now. Kyrie, you better tell your brother about me, man. Uh, Kahari, I'm talking about Kyrie. Young Buck Octopus, we don't know. Slightly insane. Um, number nine. These triangles, uh, both 30, 60, 90. Hopefully, you can obviously see that. Put 30 degrees there, you know it's a right angle. They call these rectangles. So, right angle here, right angle here. 60. You don't need to write this in, but I'm going to write it in for you so it can be obvious. I mean, you should be able to see it without that. That being the case, I can find all these sides knowing that these two triangles are 30, 60, 90 triangles. Also, knowing that these are rectangles, I know this side is going to be congruent to this one. I know this side is going to be congruent to this one. So I can really focus on one, and then I can get my other answers. Uh, they gave me 12 as the length of the hypotenuse. So I want to find my short leg. Uh, anybody know what a short leg will be? I can't hear you. Yeah, DC will be six. So would AB. Cool. Then after that, I just need to find my long leg, which is what you know that billing. Say it if you know it. Six square root three. It's multiplying by radical three. So that's six square root three, six square root three up there. And then after that, I just want to know the perimeter of ABC. To the nearest tenth, so you're adding all of them together. Uh, you're going to want to get decimals for your uh, stuff. Let me just show you what the setup would be. So perimeter of A, B, C, D would be me saying um, 6 radical 3 plus 6 radical 3 plus 6 plus 6. You don't have to panic, though. Some of y'all probably trying to figure out how to put it in the calculator. Do the 6 radical 3 part first and then times by 2 because you know it's two of them. So what I would do in my calculator if I had, like, a standard calculator, I would say, okay, um... 3, take the square root of that, times that by 6, I get 10 point whatever, I'm going to multiply that by 2 because I know it's 2 of those, and then I'm going to add, yeah, you can either add 12 or add 6 and 6, but add 12 because you got the two sixes, 32 point whatever, whatever, you need to round to the nearest tenth, so it's 32.78 something, something, something. Nearest tenth will be 32.8. I wrote that down now. <clears throat> 32.8. Yeah, that's how you would do that problem. Um, number 10 is similar to that. I ain't even going to help you with number 10. You can figure number 10 out on your own. On number 10, I should I help you with number 10. One thing on number 10, they don't tell you to uh, round to the nearest tenth, so you need to keep that in simplest radical form. <clears throat> I'll let you figure number 10. I think I give y'all too much sometimes. I'm going to let you figure that one out. It's a square, though. So, it's telling you what kind of triangles you got inside. So. Thank you.
treat the radical signs like variables, though. 